So, good evening and welcome. I'm up here in the top, in the right. <laughs> so, where are we at with the motion system? <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I have finally, basically all the frame design, uh, electronics, everything's sorted out. But still want to do some testing with models and obviously... I want to carry on with my standalone, but uh, what I need to do now, this is basically hopefully the last test I'll do using a model with servos. Um, I do actually have, so that I can test the frame design to make sure that when I have motors and everything, nothing hits the bodywork, it moves, the whole thing works. I've basically now got those are two potentiometers and two DC motors and they're gear motors so I've got those plus I have um, some motor controllers where are we? Uh, motor controller so these are only small things but small motor controllers and that these are only L298Ns and that so very low power they're just for those little motors uh, but they'll enable me to do so the wiring will be exactly the same as I do for a full size system um, and I'll be using basically the same software so the same sketch for the Arduino but it's just with all the smaller bits so I'm actually going to be able to do a proper test with full motion and then with standalone for two potentiometers so i just wanted to and thanks to a friend who very kindly got me a license because i didn't have a license for sim tools which meant i couldn't use gp bikes because i didn't have the license he very kindly gifted me a license the other day um, well, I got it yesterday morning and I had a lot of trouble trying to get it to work. And it turned out that, because I was using Sintools V2 and um, I had the, got the GP Bikes plug-in and the program just kept crashing. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I looked online and eventually found someone had the same kind of problem. And what it is, you can't get the V2 plug-in anymore somehow. Or I can't find it, but I can find the V3. But you can't use the V3 with V2. So I got SimTools V3, and then there's no real documentation on it. So trying to set it up and everything yesterday was an absolute nightmare for me. Because I'm new at this. And I... I put their hands up I'm totally new I'm a, a newbie um, and it, but it's it's great fun learning um, and once you get a grasp for it it's easier than you think you know um, it actually seems kind of easier to set up than bloody VR <laughs> uh, especially if you're using Steam anyhow point being we're at stage now I've got instead of using live for speed where it was a car sim and uh, doing motion I've now got GP bikes uh, so now we're not working on the roll and sway uh, the sway and surge we're working on roll and pitch as it should be um, now I haven't really set this up as there isn't documentation like I said but you can see I've got um, this is sim tools v3 here and if we look quickly I've got um well I'm clicking on the recording window <laughs> and not on the program itself so I've got my access assignments but what I'll do is I'll click on on home and this is a bit different I've actually got a set of courses as well because I've got a couple of bikes for a set of courses now I've got to set it up but basically I can go in here I've got it up and running now. Um, I've still got to do so crash detection, 
parking I've got sorted, um, access limits I'm using full, and then my min tune at the moment I'm still playing around because using the servos the programming isn't so fine and therefore it's pretty crass. So it's not as it would be if I'm using DC motors, which would be a lot finer and it'll run a lot smoother, have a lot more motion in it. Um, so these are really just preliminary, making sure that the design of the frame is gonna work, um, which so far it's, it's perfect. So without further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a full video because I tell you what no one's done any real tutorials on this. Once I've got all this done, I will do um, some proper tutorials on how to use the software. Once I've learned everything myself, so for now we're just gonna start up. So I double click on the GB bikes. Oh, I'm gonna move this over because I may want to use it because I may want to adjust the amount of um, the sensitivity for the pitch and that, and you can do that kind of on the fly. But for now, we're just gonna go to my normal track, and actually this is a good track to use because it will show that when you get on track, um, it's not just that when you accelerate or you brake, but it's like here, you can see there's a slope going up. So A1 ring is very, got the undulations in it. And you'll actually see that on this. It's like when you're coming up to one corner, so the third corner, basically you're going up a hill. So when you're braking, it doesn't look like it's actually braking, but it is. But it's because you're going uphill, it's doing both at the same time. So anyhow, I'm not gonna ride too fast and I'm gonna, do a few things so you can actually see how it moves. So just watch the um, model in the left hand corner, pointing in the right way this time, and uh, you'll see how it moves. Now remember, because of the camera angle, this was the best I could really do. And you can see we're going uphill, so it's pointing upwards. I'm going to take it slow so I can explain how motion really is working. Let me see if I whack the brakes on. Now, I haven't set up... When you're using motors, it'll be different because what will actually happen is you'll be tuning it to work properly. Servo motors, you can't do that. It's a very crass, very basic bit of programming whereas once you do it properly with the real software so a proper sketch then it will be a lot better so I'm just gonna ride around a little bit now not fast so I can show you if I go off-road that really upset it it's like I've got no crash detection so if I crash, it sends the thing crazy. And also, the problem with the servo is, it's got, on the shaft, it's got teeth. And I can't get it, the tooth I need to use is the one in the middle. Now I'm actually going downhill, and you can see that the model is actually facing down the hill now. And it's gonna get steeper as it goes down. And then if I break, it'll be even sharper. But because you'd be facing downhill, the actual bike, the real simulator, would be facing down to show that you're, you're going down a hill. Like I said, A1 rings really up and down. You don't realize it until you're actually on it. Just how much. Now, I don't know which ones are these rumble strips. Now, these ones aren't so bad. No, those rumble strips are not. There's some more around the corner. I just want to show the basics of how it is with motion and using a bike sim, as opposed to, I think, 
these rumble strips work here. Now you can see how it's reacting to the rumble strips. And how it start facing up the hill. But you can see it's got the, the surge up and that's the hill bottoms out and it now starts going down the hill again. So it's not just your roll and it's not just if you're braking. It will actually show you whether you're on a hill Even with uh, one hand is not good. Right, so. I'm not trying to pull a wheelie, but I'm trying to show have a little show how the bike is moving and this is a lot better than when I did that live for speed plus that live for speed car had plastic tyres Way too early. I've got this transmission set a bit wrong, I think. Stop looking at the models. Concentrate on riding. I say, on the proper simulator and using DC motors, you should feel every rumble strip in the end. really break a lot later with this. I think now I've got the idea. Yeah. Really wrong gear ratios. I'm way too long a box. Running out of top end. I don't trust coming into this in second though. up a lot. Oh no 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 I slipped it there. I knew it as soon as I gave gas there. Now you can see when I crash it sends the thing crazy. I say I'm using servos. But my next test is really gonna be using the DC motors with proper motor controllers. And that'll then make it a bit better. 
Like I say, I've also these servo motors because they've got teeth on the damn shaft. I couldn't get the arms to be in the right place. Because it has a certain amount of travel. And so to get the whole travel, couldn't get it in the middle. But there you go. So that was just to show it works with GB bikes. Next one up is the uh, proper electronics, but still with the model. So, yeah, our journey with motion is really starting now, and uh, hopefully, um, next one will be a lot better using motors plus I need I really want to do a 1 9th scale because I'm using this model is 1 12th is the actual model uh, I couldn't put the fairing on because it'll catch on it because it's a 1 10th frame that I designed and best I can do is I can get a 1 9th you and then do a, a scale frame for that it'll be a lot bigger and that way I can look and actually have it so I can see where the motors would be inside instead of spending thousands and having to world and do everything on the real one really want to do as, as good a scale model as possible save myself a lot of money uh, and really get it right very first time so we're getting there um, I really need to because I've got to get this done as quickly as possible anyhow people thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of this. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.